Hola everybody, welcome back to my channel Clear Vision where we're going to explore the depths of the human psyche and shed light on complex psychological topics. Today I'm going to be diving into a particularly insidious subject, the subtle lies that covert narcissists tell. Covert narcissists can be incredibly difficult to spot because their manipulation tactics are really really subtle and as I said insidious. But once you know what to look for, you can protect yourself and others from their toxic influence. In this video, I'm going to uncover five common lies that covert narcissists often tell. Stay tuned until the end as understanding these lies can empower you to navigate relationships with greater awareness and confidence. I've also done a different video on covert narcissists. I'm going to put it up here and how they operate and now we're going to dive in a little bit more focused. So first one, one of the most subtle lies covert narcissists tell is I'm here for you. They project an image of being supportive and caring, but their actions rarely match their words. This support often comes with strings attached, which are designed to keep you dependent and grateful. So you can find this I'm here for you being turned into I just want what's best for you. I'm here for you, but I think you should consider X, Y, and Z. When in reality, the covert narcissist is attempting to mold your decisions to keep you dependent on their support. This can also come across in another way, which is uh, a lot of people talk about where it's kind of like, I'm here for you, but the the words do not align with the action. So every time you go to assert your independence, go do your thing, go do your hobby, go do your job, whatever it might be, they will actually actively make your life more stressful, there'll be more aggravation, there'll be more hassle, they will maybe begin to drain you emotionally, get used to start feeling sorry for them, even starting arguments. What they're doing is they're exhausting your energy. So it's again, it's that I'm supporting you, I'm giving you space for this, I'm helping you with that. Um, but at the same time, I'm gonna drain your energy and make things really, really difficult so that you don't actually achieve the things that you want to. But I can kind of stand back and say, well, I was helping you, I've been supporting you because I said this, this, and this. And like I said, the alternative way is to actually start to try to undermine your own kind of uh, capabilities and autonomy within what you're doing by kind of making out that you're not coping. So they're here to support you and help you, therefore taking a little bit more power, wearing down your self-esteem, your own kind of self-confidence, if you like, and getting you to begin to doubt yourself. I need to put a disclaimer in here. These are um, five common lies that covert narcissists say or tell, but it doesn't necessarily mean if you hear this that necessarily you're dealing with a covert narcissist. These should be taken as kind of mm, amber flags, maybe red flags, uh, maybe something for you to watch out for if you're already thinking, I'm kind of involved with a covert narcissist. If you begin to piece together, well, some of these actions, some of these lies have been told, some of these words not aligning with actions, then maybe you are in a relationship with a covert narcissist. But there needs to be a combination of uh, actions and behaviors, if you like, and words that are said in order for you to kind of piece that puzzle together and make that final kind of conclusion. So some of these common lies are just kind of, someone's got a narcissistic trait, maybe low self-esteem, or they've kind of got a bit of an ego, doesn't necessarily mean they're a covert narcissist. But again, five lies here, start hearing all of them, uh, along with some of the other behaviors. Like I said, check out the video I've done before, and you could well be dealing with uh, a covert narcissist. The second common lie is, I don't want any recognition. Often covert narcissists present themselves as really, really humble, self-sacrificing, but at the same time, they crave, uh, they're craving admiration and validation. So they subtly maneuver situations to receive praise without seeming overtly needy. Where you might spot this is they don't want any recognition, they don't need any praise, uh, it was nothing, but at the same time, you'll watch them kind of move around and make sure everybody knows of their kind of like selfless actions, what they did, how much of a help they were. And if you're in a relationship with them, it's often gonna be, they're, they're gonna kind of take some of the glory for your achievements, for um, what you've accomplished, for wherever you've got to or what you're doing. There will be some kind of, how do you put it? Yeah, it, it will literally be taking credit while saying they don't want credit for it, but they'll make sure everybody knows. So this is not like that kind of um, altruism where everybody knows I'm, I has to know I'm a hero, although that would come under it. It's this kind of like, 
uh, again, you, you start putting these lies together. You know, I'm supporting you, I'm here for you, I don't want any credit for all of your success, but I'm here and I'm helping you and I'm gonna make sure everybody knows. Uh, and so again, the words they tell you don't align with their actions and don't align with the words they tell other people. This next one is a very, very common lie. I didn't mean to hurt you. This was not my intention. And again, this sounds quite sincere, but it's often a deflection to avoid taking responsibility for their actions. They'll shift the focus onto your misunderstanding rather than addressing their behavior. This is such a common one. Um, so there'll be things like, it wasn't my intention to uh, hurt your feelings, or I know where my anger comes from, you know, it comes from my childhood, so therefore my angry outbursts at you, my um, humiliating comments, my um, degrading you in some way or devaluing you in some way, doesn't actually, um, it comes from, it doesn't come from an intentionally bad place. Now again, this could be a genuine remark. Um, and again, it would need to be backed up by actions like, okay, now you know it, now you've realized it, go and do something about it, get this behavior in check, go to therapy, something like that, because it's not doing our relationship any good. But if you're constantly hearing it, it's constant, it's a constant justification for someone's behavior, someone's cutting you down with whatever they're doing, then chances are it's it's part of uh, you're dealing with a co part of you're dealing with a covert narcissist and it's part of their manipulation uh, technique. It's part of their insidious way of getting in. Because this is this is where the insidious bit is. It's so on the surface, you know, if someone says, well, well, what's going on? And you kind of go, well, they're, they're supporting me. Well, they say they support me and they say this, but I kind of see this, this, and this. The behaviors are subtle. An overt narcissist is just gonna, you know, metaphorically hit you in the face with their behavior. Covert narcissists won't. They come underneath, they get under your skin. You begin to doubt things, but you can't quite put your finger on it. There's not an actual specific behavior there. It's like, well, okay, so they had angry outbursts. They were a bit devaluing. They said some hurtful things, but they didn't mean to. They said they didn't mean to, and they kind of, in some way, they owned it, but they haven't actually done anything about it, and they keep doing it. And like with a lot of manipulation stuff, a lot of abusive techniques, if it keeps happening and there's no change, then this is abusive, this is toxic, because it's continuing. And some other phrases that can go with that is you take everything so negatively, you take things so personally, I didn't, like I said, I didn't mean it like that, you are a little bit sensitive today, and you kind of go, yeah, mm, okay, but mm, it's when you get that feeling inside where you're like, well, yeah, it kind of makes sense, but actually, this isn't feeling right, and this keeps happening, so, you know, again, be aware that this is a repeating behavior and this is linked to other behaviors within the covert narcissistic, uh, covert narcissistic abusive dynamic. Number four, I'm just like you, which is again, another insidious lie. Covert narcissists often mimic your interests, your values, and even your struggles to create a false sense of um, intimacy and a false sense of trust. It's, it's mirroring. It's the same as what overt narcissists do. It's a mirroring technique and it's designed to, I say designed, it sounds like it's conscious, it's not. What it does is it, well it can be, what it does is it, it, uh, it manipulates and controls you uh, to feel a deep yet false connection with the other person. So it's kind of like, oh wow, I've got the same tragedy as you. Oh wow, I've got the same heartbreak as you. I have the same history as you. Now, now there's a very good chance that maybe this is true. But it's if you start to notice it with everything, again, it's like it's shifting everything away from you and it's always about them, which is a, a sign of a narcissist. You know, hang on, this, is, this was about me and now it's about you. And now we're sharing it. You know, and this is where this kind of uh, twin flame sharing tragedy, soulmates, and I'm not saying, Someone can't be your twin flame or your soulmate, but it's when that kind of stuff is used to, and what they're doing is mirroring you, mimicking you, they're becoming you, so you see them as you, and you share this bond, which is completely unique, and nobody else in the world has this bond with you except for you. And I've even known of people to be able to do this online without ever meeting someone. And when you start working with the person who, who's the, uh, on the receiving end of this, 
they start realizing they've actually shared information they didn't realize they share because narcissists will get to know you quick and then we'll get to know you very well, even better than yourself. And this goes for overt narcissists and covert narcissists. They will really begin to assimilate and mimic who you are in order to get that mirroring effect. Because you've got to remember, a narcissist doesn't technically have a personality. They are, they morph, they shapeshift between relationships, okay? Because at the base of them, at the core of them, is the uh, within the false self that they've built up is the true self. Well, you're never going to get to that. So this false self is this kind of morphing shell which mirrors whoever they are with, which is why often people say, you know, I was involved with a narcissist. They moved on to the next person. They're a completely different person. And they're a completely different person with this person as well. And then they moved on from them and they morphed again. And it's like, yeah, because you're dealing with someone who doesn't actually have an identity. Their identity is to mirror somebody else, to lure them in. So now you have this unique bond that nobody else in the world has and we're emotionally connected, we're emotionally invested and now they are insidiously under our skin, literally inside our flesh, crawling within us. I know that sounds a little bit poetic and metaphorical, but it's, it's how people who've been involved with covert narcissists especially say it's like, it's like they got inside me and they got, really got under my skin in such a way over such a length of time. So beware of again these lies all beginning to start, kind of bulk up you know you're getting one after the other after the other you need to bear in mind i would say bear in mind here some people can be lonely some people can have low self-esteem and they can have kind of like stars in their eyes when they meet someone who they do connect to so again it doesn't necessarily mean they're a covert narcissist you have to once again check it out against other behaviors and other lies uh, they're, they're telling you and things not aligning when things don't feel right. That's then when you begin to kind of like piece all the parts of the puzzle together and kind of go, I think I may be dealing with a covert narcissist here. Lie number five, covert narcissists will often play the victim with uh, this kind of everyone else is against me. Covert narcissists will get you to feel sorry for them. They will be the victim somehow and they draw you in with this kind of like luring you in with empathy uh, you're playing on your empathy and your sympathy you know they're the wounded swan um the wounded animal they will pull on that you know it was very in my life is full of injustice etc etc so what this does is and, and again you can link this in with number four it's kind of like we are unique and, and I'm wounded and you're here to save me and I can't believe you're here to save me and what you'll start to find and this does happen excuse me, uh, quite a lot, is that this lie, coupled with the others as well, begins to isolate you from uh, your friends and your family. What they're doing, like I said, is they're gaining your sympathy and your empathy. It's more your sympathy than anything else. And they make you their primary source of validation and support. So, for example, from going back in the archives of my history as a psychotherapist, I've seen this where um, people, um, you know, they've perhaps run out of luck. So they play, for instance, broke, out of work, but I've got tons of talent, I've got tons of potential, but I had a lot of injustices, I've got, you know, two ex-wives or husbands who've left me homeless and out on the street. This is all very unfortunate. And on the surface, it could be true, sounds true, sounds reasonable. Bad luck does happen to a lot of people. And gradually this kind of, they begin to, like I say, the, where you really notice it is through this, they begin to isolate you. It's just you and me, it's just you and me, it's just you and me against the world because the world is my enemy. So if now the world is our enemy, which makes us unique again. And we have this special bond. You see the combination, the lies beginning to combine together. And I've known people to actually, I mean, alcohol can sometimes be used. I've known that one to be used as well. Um, isolating someone in the house, let's just, you know, um, let's just drink and listen to music together and eat and cook together. And again, it sounds really kind of great on the surface, but what it's actually doing is isolating you and then they're constantly telling you about their tragedies and their traumas and they're trying to get past it and they're working so hard on it, but it's like, again, words not aligning with actions. It's just like, but are you? Are you, are you going to therapy? Are you trying to get a job? Are you trying to um, uh, get uh, financial resources? Or are you just draining me? 
And meanwhile, I'm kind of trying to help pick you up. And it's moving on from like someone seriously being down on their luck and having a few hard knocks. And then they're trying to build themselves back up and you're there for the journey and you're ha happy to support them and happy to um, be there and see them grow. This is someone dragging you down into their world and isolating you through their own supposed uh, injustices that have happened to them in the world. So it's almost victim but it's victim with a very, like, I love this word, insidious manipulation within it to get you isolated, to get you drawn in. And you might find yourself defending yourself against family members, against friends. You might find friends starting to move away. They're kind of like, and I've heard this one as well, you know, their, their partner's really creepy. There's something not right, but they can't see it. And I don't want to say anything because they're my friend, but I, I'm struggling to be around them. You know, and if you're starting to find people edging away and you're having to defend someone and... The, again, it's about things not matching up because what all narcissists work on, especially covert narcissists, is uh, cognitive dissonance. So it's this kind of confusion in the mind. That's what like gaslighting is about. You know, it's this confusion in the mind. It's like you kind of go, well, they seem so amazing, but they also seem this. And they seem so wonderful and there for me, but I'm becoming isolated. They're supporting me as they said they are, but actually they're, they're creating me the most stress out of anybody. So then I can't get stuff done. So it's this, you get this kind of like opposing pictures of the same person within your head and also your lifestyle. And you are being dragged down and sucked into this kind of vortex where you are just, you know, it is literally spider to the fly kind of stuff where you are pulled in. But the covert narcissist does it through making you feel sorry for them. They are, they are like a, 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 a victimized narcissist, if you like. They are the narcissist that gets you to feel sorry for them and therefore they manipulate you and control you and overpower you through these techniques. So I hope you got something from these five common lies. Um, there are many, many more. And of course, these will all come about within these kind of relationships and dynamics within their own unique subjective way because two people coming together is always unique and will have its own spin on it. But at its core, they will be along those lines. So um, I really hope this helped. And until next time, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios. <laughs>